On It Invitational 7 would like to thank its sponsors. On It, Total Human Optimization. Hypnotic, The Art of Greatness. 10 Planet Jiu Jitsu, No Gi, All Day, with over 90 locations worldwide. Visit 10planetjj.com. Bang Muay Thai, Austin. Black Swan Yoga. And 10th Planet Austin. Kicking off our super fights is a kids match between Ohana Academy's Moses Cabrera taking on Precision BJJ's Austin Hines. Yes, we're live, Michelle. What's up? <laughs> I'm having a great time. It's all good. So we got Moses Cabrera coming out. And um, we got a special guest with us right now, too, that's helping us out on the mics. Sergio the Natural. <laughs> Sergio, welcome. It's always good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Uh-oh. Hey, Sergio, you said you've trained with both of these boys? Yep. Yeah? Well, so I trained with one of them. One of them is Moses Cambrera. Uh -huh. I competed against Austin Hines. Oh, OK. So who, um, in your mind, who, who do you got for this matchup? Moses Cabrera. Mo Moses, he's going Moses. Yeah. Lupe. I've trained with him. He's a good, a good. And his opponent fighting out of Precision BJJ. Oh, I know. Austin. Hi. <laughs> it's my muscles. But you don't cut any weight, do you? No, it's my muscles. I can't grow. Oh, grow it's grow. muscles. So, mm. so if you get a bunch of muscles, are you gonna want to cut weight then? No. 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 Just Oh, look at, oh, look at that walkout. Yeah. Oh, He's roar. ready to go. He and did the roar. Definitely. And uh, this is definitely going to be a oh, great match up. here. Yeah. Austin Hines from Precision BJJ. He's an orange belt. So Austin Hines is actually, like we were speaking of earlier, like is a second generation mixed martial artist. His father actually trained and still is currently training and coaching him, but his father came from the first guard of MMA during the 90s. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Here we go, he's pulling guard. So this kid guard. is definitely born and bred for it. Trying to work that lockdown. And so these matches, there are no points. It's whoever gets the mission. Yes, yeah, so yeah. this is EBI overtime. This match is actually six minutes. Six minutes. No points, and it's one overtime. In the event there's no sub during. And in the overtime, they're they're put in certain positions. Well, just got that yes, guard. Yes, it's either going to be rear naked choke to the back, or they can take spider web or arm bar, okay. basically. It looks like he's going for something right now. Yeah, it looks like he's going for the Ezekiel. Yes, no it does Ezekiel. actually. Very Ezekiel very nice. Ezekiel bottom. Yep. Oh, it looks like he's got his chin down. Doing a really good job protecting there. Sergio, what would you normally do in a situation like this? Mm, I would try to get rubber guard. Nice. And then I'll start working an omoplata or a triangle. Right now, I'm still holding on to that Ezekiel. I'd recommend lo losing the Ezekiel and try and get a sweep or a rubber guard or something or to get out of there. Switched up to something else. Yeah. You sometimes you hold on to a submission for too long and it doesn't work. You end up gassing out, exactly. burning your arms yeah, out, burning your legs up. out. And, and you lose you lose out on precious time and, and opportunities to go for other submissions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's hard, you know, when you when you feel like you get a submission and you're like, it's just right there. Yeah, I can finish it. Yeah. Exactly. And <laughs> sometimes you gotta be gassing out. Exactly. Just to get to that point is so much work to, so to let that go is a really big decision. It's a big risk. Yeah. Well just got that body triangle on guard. Ooh, very nice right there. Is that your go-to uh, guard? Do you like to do the, the, the body triangle? Uh, no, not really, because I want to free up my legs. I don't like staying in guard too much mm -hmm. either. A no gi, a gi, I can actually get Ezekiel with my grips, but a no gi, I just want to get out of there. I want to get on top. Oh, you you like doing submissions from the top? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I can do top and bottom. He, he says yeah. from he's top. Like, this kid can get like, well, it from anywhere. You know. <laughs> you know, I could do it from anywhere. Yeah, so. basically. <laughs> but if I prefer... <laughs> But if you gave me a choice, <laughs> I'll be on top. Yeah. It's, it's, it's always nice, especially in MMA. You know, uh, when I first started fighting, 
I would always get submissions off my back. But, you know, the, the sport began to evolve, and the being on your back just looked bad to the judges, mm. to the crowd. Absolutely. So even if you are going for submissions, you're on your back, you're losing the fight. Yeah. So even, you even, if you're, even if you're really working, I've seen it where it's lopsided with the judges. It's something that – it's an art that people – Unfortunately, when it comes to judging, sometimes yes. don't understand. But luckily, when it comes to jujitsu, it's a, there's an appreciation absolutely. for having the patience on your back and and working slowly for those submissions. Oh, and, and then speaking he's of, oh, oh, he's going oh, for an arm bar. Oh, like he's got he's an opportunity. Right there, there oh, there's oh, the arm bar right there. He got that Hines oh. left leg hooked okay, over, and then he there. brought it back Ooh. to the guard. No, he came out back where they were. And Trebrero really decently. working off his back very very well. Austin Hines in oh, trouble. Oh, there we go with that rubber guard here. Yeah, he's got to get out of there. So what? What? what, what oh. oh, look, look. There you go. Oh. No, he's got high guard. Yep, right there. Trying to go for a TP, it looks like. Oh, oh didn't back. quite work out. Still doing a great job working that high guard. Hines starting to stack. He's starting to get out of there. Yeah. He needs to put the knee if in the he, middle so he can exactly. break it and get out. Exactly. If he were to start walking forward. There's a possibility he can open Ooh, up that opportunity. Uh, creep those shoulders oh, up a little bit. No. Very good oh, triangle right arm. here to he's an arm bar. Arm. Oh, tap. to tap. Oh, Moses Cabrera. Good job, Moses boys. Cabrera with the winner at 4 minutes and 19 seconds. The arm bar, Moses Cabrera. <laughs>
position. Uh, Valdez them. actually uh, recently competed at the Nogi Worlds at okay. Bluebelt. So, I mean, Yai is very, very <coughs> talented and taking on uh, the Rabati Brown Belt here, putting on a great show. This is a very competitive match, mm -hmm. very aggressive match for sure, very back and forth. And speaking uh -oh, of, here uh -oh. we go again. Uh -oh. He's got the back. Got the back again. This is just fantastic he's here. He's looking for something. Hooks? He's fishing. Trying to get them hooks. hooks. Oh, there no, got, got the body, body triangle. Rock. Really trying to sink it in here. Thinking he's looking for Valdez. a choke. Trying to shake the hand there. Trying to fight the hands there. A lot of pressure with that body lock. That is never fun, especially when you're getting hipped into like that. And with the body lock, he's got a hook on his leg, so he can't try to escape from that. Yeah, escape. Absolutely. Escape. He's keeping him controlled. Yeah, he's definitely he's trying to calm uh, his energy down, I think. Yeah. He's on his side. Okay, oh, okay. Oh All right, yeah, it looks oh. like Micah has a foot there. Micah's got, got a foot, foot there. Oh. Wow. Really oh. chasing it. Very, Good. very, Jason's he's committing foot. to it. Uh, Caleb might be in trouble. Uh. Oh, it's out. It's yeah, out. Never mind. Got past the knee. Back, back on their back feet. And here we go again, everybody. This Fantastic match. Yeah, it was an aggressive phase of fighting right there. The night's just getting started. <laughs> More hand fights. <laughs> they're just halfway through the round and they're like, oh. Like, oh, yeah. But the thing is, it's a super fight, you know, so these guys are really just throwing it all out there. Exactly. Every bit Gotta of leave it all out there. Oh, I think oh, there's a. Oh, nice. Setting it up for something. He's gonna pull something. I thought he was gonna do that donkey guard for a second, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Famous oh. Jeff Glover stuff okay. there. Oh, the pulls guard, guard, but it looks but like it's kind of backfired. He's yeah. now at side control. Oh. Reversal! Oh. Fantastic! Reversed nice roll. Reversed it. That's what I was talking about earlier. Sometimes people feel more comfortable off their back. They can do sweeps and stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Instead of going for the takedown, full guard, I'm even if they end up in a bad position. I'm, I'm sure, you, like uh, like you were saying, like uh, we were talking earlier about people kind of um, faking and juking positions. Like, mm -hmm. you're very well. He knew what's coming. Mm -hmm. He was ready for the sweep. Yeah, it's just as long as you're a step ahead, you can take risks like that. Absolutely. More hand fights. Kind of reminds me of Clay Guida with his hair in his face like that. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. Ooh, I don't either. To get oh, oh, wow. Go through. Very good job with Just the camera. He's up. able to get out of there. I think he tried to roll into side control. It would be an interesting transition. Absolutely. Very good observation there, Sergio. More hand fights. I think Valdez, yep. Go for that single leg. Single leg. Kicks out. And he, sta he sits down. How aggressive these guys are. Yeah, Stone really cold in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally really good relaxed. at controlling. Controlling the breath and being able to stay mm -hmm. in the zone while they're hitting these high. <coughs> Absolutely. It's a big part energy. of it. Mm -hmm. Keeping calm. Caleb's trying to step over his guard or at least control his legs to pass. Valdez trying to work the legs again. All right, here we're in a little leg fight here. Yeah. Not quite past the knee yet, so it looks uh, like he will be able to oh get out. And we're time. going in the KBI. overtime, there ladies and gentlemen. Well done. <laughs> so that was a eight-minute round. Uh, let me see. Six. Did play six-minute round. Soccer six minutes. We're going to overtime. Caleb Isaacs looks like he's wanting to go ahead and start out in spider oh, webs. Not, yeah, gra not grabbing the like leg. Looks like he's not going for the leg, so. Yeah, Valdez can corkscrew. Oh. Absolutely, and he can oh, But he has pretty good core right there. Yeah, it looks like he's going to snap. He's going to get up. Yeah, snapping up. Oh! Oh, wow. And Valdez is out. Good job. So this is what good I expected job. right here. Valdez picking the back. Oh no. Let's see. Oh, bye, Triangle. Oh, is he out? No, he's not. Switching over. Uh, uh, oh, he's he, 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 And the blue belt yeah, takes out control. the brown belt in overtime by rear naked choke. Sometimes it, it, it pays off to have that sense of urgency.
closing out our first round of super fights, Alaskan gold medalist David Clay takes on three-time IBJJF Kids World Champion Joshua Ham. You know, yeah, two teenagers. David Clay, I'm a blue belt. I'm 33. He's 13. I guarantee you, he would probably take me out. Wrap you up. Amazing. And like I would. Yeah. You know when they're teenagers, they got all this angst in them. So. I know. I uh, I was just about to say that endless <laughs> energy. I remember as a kid, I'd just be outside all day, and it's it's scary what they can use their energy on yeah, now. Anytime the teenagers come in, I'm like, oh boy, here we go, because I know they're just they're fearless and they're not giving up. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Good match. It's gonna be a good match. Here we go, boys. Looks like. Ooh. And Joshua, Joshua Ham. Trying to actually, get for the Imanari. Really kicking it off there. Ooh, oh, very nice. He, sweep. he gets up on chain. Now, now he's on top. Looks like David, David Clay is already going for the ankle. Oh, oh he's getting it. He's already oh, read him. Rolling out, out of it. Wow. Fantastic out. job getting out of that hill hook. Yeah. David Clay getting on top. Trying for that foot Goes again. for it again. He knows what he wants and he is going for it. Yeah. They got back up again. You gotta love the sportsmanship. You know, these guys just had that crazy scramble and get up and reset, do it all over again. And both these guys have fantastic credentials. Yeah. Josh Ham, four-time BFA world champion, three-time IBJJF kids world champion. Taking yeah. on David Clay, who's actually the younger brother of Liz Clay, who was recently defeated at the ADCC trials, oh, with hands. David actually winning a couple Alaskan cha state championships himself. Mm -hmm. So now coming here to the Raider 48 and testing his skills. So is, is that where David is from? He's from Anchorage, Alaska, David Clay. So they brought him all the way down from Alaska. Yeah, there's a whole crew of guys out here competing from Alaska today. That's great. Oh, yeah. Um, really? Still going for that foot it, there. It looks like he's trying to get up on his shoulder a little bit more to try to go and finish that off, but it well, looks like he's decided he's to abandon it for now. Yeah. Now in a neutral position. Looks like 50-50. 50-50, yep. very yeah. close to it. Oh, oh Joshua trying for grabbing the Grabbing the head there, trying to make sure he can get out. He's rolling he's on the shoulder, the belly foot. down is a very dangerous position, but he is, looks, oh, not quite. Oh. There you go. He's over the knee. He's got that single ashi. Oh, is he going to throw for it? Joshua Ham? Nope. Very nice sweep. Oh. Good technical fight. Looks like Joshua Ham trying for that foot again. You can see where each one of these guys are comfortable at. Joshua on his back and David, David on his top. Exactly. Josh is inverted. Looks like. Oh, Ooh, he's getting the back. back. He got the back. He got there the back. you go. Joshua is getting the back. Oh, but he no, fell he off. lost the back. Oh. He just lost the back. Still he's going for something, though, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like a. Looks like he's trying to grab an arm. Oh, Joshua's in. Dangerous position right here. Yeah, it does look like David might have yeah. opportunity to sneak out and yeah. He needs to try to hop over. David Clay. I think he's trying to get his arm out. Oh. David Clay. But David's coach telling him to slow it down. Sometimes when you first start these matches, you're so eager to win. You just keep going. Absolutely. Yes. And you yeah. know, he, keeps, he, he knows what he wants, and he's successful with it. I mean, he's won two state championships with the same exact technique. I mean, doing these heel hooks. Yeah, w <laughs> if, it, if it's not broke. Don't fix it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if it works, it works. You can't, you know. Absolutely. You don't stop doing it if it, if it works. Even if you see it coming, when someone's that good at it, Dude, yeah. it's just no stopping it. Kind of like it. Oh right he here. There he is, right on it again. Going for that oh, foot. Trying for that. He's doing a fantastic job rolling. of rolling out. Joshua Ham trying to get out. Fantastic. And they go close to the crowd. There he get there he is trying to get a sweep here. Putting that pressure. He has really good balance there on top. We're gonna go ahead and reset in the middle here. He's really good on his top there. I think Joshua's getting that Della Diva to prepare for something. He's so good when you get into that Della Riva and you can just knock them off balance and control your opponent in those ways. Oh, there he Fantastic goes. Fantastic pass right Passing. there. Passing. He's got the sprawl. 
Joshua's Keep on it top. very, very low. Working that Dars. If he were to reach over the back, he might be able to tighten that up, but it looks like he's hi he's already fighting the hand. Oh, oh, oh. oh there we go. On top. He's locked him out. He's got his hooks. Use that Dars very, very well. Yeah, the Even though we didn't get the Dars, transition to the mount. There you go. Yeah. Great. Now Joshua's in mount. He's just taking his time. Looking for a submission, I believe. You get a good position. Sometimes you can even take a breath and just mm. regain analyze what's going on. Absolutely. Yeah. Regain your energy. It's analyze. always nice. It's like getting a break, getting laid down, but you're laying down on top of somebody and making them tired. <laughs> 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 Very productive nap. <laughs> Killing two birds with one stone. You know? Exactly. Well, let me take a break and figure out what I'm going to do next. <laughs> I'm just going to lay here for a minute. Don't mind me. Right, these guys are reset again. And start in the middle. A lot, a lot of action where they're rolling out of stuff constantly with those with yeah. the heel hooks. A very good technical fight. Yeah. Very good sportsmanship here. There he goes. Oh, immediately. Standing up. Pulls guard. Joshua holding on. Framing. Oh. Trying to shake him off. Frame. Off and he goes down. Trying to get the sweep. Very good job. I think Joshua Han wants to go for that sweep. He yeah, gets he gets it up. Right he gets there. up. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. It's oh, the back. back. He's back. got one hook in. He's no. got a body triangle body now. Triangle. This is not a great spot for Clay. Oh, uh, I think he's going for a choke. A really choke. going as hard as he can for that choke, knowing that it is almost. Oh, oh, oh no, he's going for an arm. Almost the end of the round. Uh, oh, he's going for the arm. Oh, it's almost in regulation. He's, he's oh, wanting to so get close. this. Yeah. Oh, man. That was so close. Could have finished it Very right good job still maintaining that mouth. Joshua's doing a really good job utilizing his length. He has those long legs and the long arms. He's able to just kind of like spin around David. <laughs> it's like he barely and, just. But he doesn't let go. He no. doesn't let go of the triangle no. position. So it, it, it's great for him because he can he can secure these positions and transition and he's, from he's front got to the, back. He's got the mounted triangle. He's trying his yeah, he's but trying I gotta, to think. He's got to get the David. right angle. Oh, and it is uh, end of regulation. We're going to yeah. overtime. Yeah. Oh, no, it's overtime. Yes, okay, we're going to overtime. Oh, he was saved by the bell right there. Yeah, I got to highlight very, David Clay for defense. Yeah, it's it a really good, good defense. defense. In top game, he's aggressive. It's a really good match. So how do they determine who gets to go first? You know, that's that's a good I don't know, question on that. It used to be, I think it was a coin toss beforehand, oh, if I was mm -hmm. not mistaken. Okay. Well, David, David takes the back. I think he's got a, no, he does got a brow check. He's going to scoot out there. There he goes. Back oh, to the map. And, he's out. and Josh he's Ham is out. out. And he's out. Oh, wait. Are they going? Oh, he's not out. He's still maintained He's still maintained a submission. So oh, now no, it's out. out. No, so out. even if you start a submission from the I back, was gonna say. if they roll over and you're still maintaining the position, they still count it. Okay. So until he lets go of that ori original submission, even though he rolls to his back mm -hmm. and faces you, it is actually still time on the clock. Okay. I think I predict that Joshua Hong's going to get a body triangle. Let's see. But oh, yeah, almost. There it goes. Oh, he turned oh, he got body triangle. oh, he got the wrong side body triangle. This could be dangerous. Yeah, I'm trying but to shake David him off. Some long arms are really hard to shake off there. Oh. See, what David Clay could do is he can wrap his legs around around Joshua's Ooh. foot and then finish it there. Time. Ooh. That's a good match. The Onnit World Open Jiu-Jitsu Tournament is happening at Paleo Effects April 27th through 29th. Sign up for Gi and No Gi divisions, all of which are sub only with EBI overtimes. Registration includes entry into Paleo FX, the world's premier holistic wellness event. Get your tickets on 10PATX.com. Kicking off round one of tonight's Absolute Division, 2017 IBJJF Nogi Brown Belt World Champion Joe Dirksheet takes on EBI 9 and 14 veteran Travis Moore. Yes, this is an eight-man eight absolute, absolute tournament. So absolutely no weight classes, like I was saying <laughs> earlier. It's uh, it's nice. It's kind of like um, back in the days before there was weight classes yes. in mixed martial arts. I love seeing it in jujitsu because you cannot fake technique. You're not at all. You have to actually be better because the, the weight doesn't matter. You can't use it as an excuse. It's an absolute bracket. So if you're going to decide to put yourself into these these matches, you gotta just got to be ready for anything. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner and representing John's gym, 
Travis Moore. Two-time EBI veteran. He competed at EBI 9 and 14. He actually competed at EBI 14, the absolute, so has plenty experience in that division. Sounds like he has a crowd here with him. No, he has a huge crowd with him. It's a hometown boy. He actually is out of Temple, Texas, yeah. about an hour north here. Looks like a superhero with the, with the, the oh, yeah. dash guard on there. You could Travis definitely tell he didn't have to cut any weight coming into this. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Travis Moore is a black belt, his, his gym is John's gym. One of the beautiful things about the absolute division, none of these guys are having to stress about going in the sauna or anything. Oh, man. We, uh, I was eating lunch with one of them yesterday, yeah. and they were trying to bulk up. <laughs> yep. So we got Travis Moore over here working the quarter guard. Yeah, it looks like the quarter guard. Oh, these men. Oh, Joe looking for an ankle lock. Yep. Okay. Both of them going, going, for, for, going, going for, for the leg, leg battle here. Oh. Oh. Joe Dirksing! to round one of the absolute division. On at World Open champ, Tommy McKay takes on Legacy Jiu Jitsu's Dennis Grogan. Fighting out of the red corner, representing Gracie Humida Jiu Jitsu, Tommy McKay. Yes. Oh, nice, coming out with some of the drive music. <laughs> Very nice choice of soundtrack right there by Tommy McKay, but Tommy McKay is no joke. Uh, over under Gracie Humida, uh, believe it or not, just recently got his black belt. Uh, I've seen him compete under brown belt for, I guess, the past few years. He's been here in Texas. He's a local guy. Fantastic. Actually a training partner of Tim Kennedy at times. Oh. So this guy is no stranger to heavy pressure. No, uh, definitely. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, representing Legacy Jiu-Jitsu, Dennis Grogan. Very good guy here out of uh, Legacy Jiu-Jitsu out of Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, actually, the winner of the uh, Jiu Jitsu Kumite, which is a big in house tournament we have okay. here, where we have people from all across the U.S. come and compete. He came all the way from Alaska and he took it home. All right. So let's see what he does tonight against Anna Invitational veteran Tommy McKay. Here we go. Shake hands and it's off to the races. Here we go. Hand fights. Grogan. Actually, his first opponent in the Jiu-Jitsu Kumite, I believe, was about 70 pounds bigger than really? him. Really? Yes, actually got the fastest escape out of that. So he's no stranger to going against bigger opponents. Yeah. But in this case, it looks like he actually may have the advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dennis gave him his butterfly hooks. And transition to Z-guard. Got that Z-guard going. Nice call there, Sergio. Let's go to the Z guard looking for Delahiva. Let's go to the Delahiva. Try to oh. oil his leg lock. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, did you get that? Oh, oh, oh. they ran into the oh, crowd. Oh. They're going to continue. They're, they're continuing, continuing the off crowd, the crowd here. They, oh, have, oh, to keep they going. have to keep going. They have to keep it going. Oh, cap slicer. These, these, these ladies have front oh, row. Wow, you talk cap about slicer, front cap row. Cap oh, my God, oh, what a battle. Wow, the resilience nice. and the technique by Tommy McKay to get out of that. What an amazing transition. Those ladies got their, mon their money worth. Oh, yeah, front row. There you go, people. Yeah. On a gym. Any Anytime we have on an invitational. Oh, Dennis Gro Grogan going for a Look at that. Lock. Grogan actually has the arm. Arm and the leg. And the he leg. Has the arm. Right oh, yeah. That's incredible. Got his legs figured forward. Look yeah. at that. He is just starting to inch that heel closer and closer. Yeah, to his arm pit right trouble. there. Oh. Going to go belly down. Oh, he's trying. Uh, he's getting up. Time McKay Dennis doing a great job. Looks like he's going for the leg. Yep, oh. he's going there for the leg. Is. He's going for the leg. And Did tap. he tap? There it Dennis is. Dennis Grogan. Man, those 
are sneaky. And your winner, via heel hook, Dennis Grogan. Look at that, left. Grogan actually has the arm. Arm and the leg. And the he leg. has the arm. Oh yeah, that's he incredible. Does. Got his legs figured forward. Look yeah. at that, he is just starting to inch that heel closer and closer. Yeah, There's arm pit right trouble. there. Oh. Gonna go belly down. Oh, he's trying. Um, he's getting up. Time McKay did a great up. job. Looks like he's going for the leg. Yep, he's going, there for, the it is. going for the leg. And Did tap. tap. There it Dennis is. Rogan. Man, those are sneaky. And your winner, be a heel hook, Dennis Grogan. In our second match of the Absolute Bracket tonight, former UFC middleweight Roger Narvaez takes on Barbosa Jiu-Jitsu USA's Paul Wu. So Roger Narvaez, actually a former UFC middleweight Actually, a three-fight veteran in the UFC and also a legacy fighting here in Texas, Fernando. Fernando. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm not sure, but he's under Bard. Bosa Jiu-Jitsu is where he trains out. Okay. Just wanted to make sure we represent his background, his affiliations. <laughs> <laughs> Roger being a lot taller. Taller. Roger, yeah, Roger was a big, has always been a big guy, no matter mm -hmm. what weight class he's in. Amazing reach, very big, very broad shoulder guy. It's like Paul getting low, even though he is already the shorter guy. Yeah. Trying to get him low there. Yeah, Paul's short, but he's bulky. He's got big. Yes, you're right. So I'm guessing he has really good grips. Yeah, he's pulling that head down. Uh oh. oh. Here we go. Roger just sits down. Just oh. wants to get the game started, huh? He's like, let's go. Hands right from the bottom. He's got one mm. butterfly hook. Narvaez looking very comfortable right there. Yeah. Looks like he's exactly where he would like to be. Oh, the it's thing about being the smaller guy is you do have a, a bit more of a centered foundation because you are more compact. So if you can use it to your advantage against these bigger guys, bigger, taller guys, Ooh, that sometimes lower it can be a benefit. Absolutely, Ooh. that lower center of gravity. Some of those guys, neon bellies, things of that nature, feels like it's like a boulder. <laughs> you can't even get up. It's like, how's this guy? He's like 5'9". It's like, I have no clue how I feel like I can't get up. But yeah, Roger that's how it works. It's jujitsu. Yeah, so now, now Paul is on his back. Let's see that Narvaez really working that top game. Like Very confident. Oh, oh Narvaez back. takes the back, back right there. Oh, but no. good job by Paul Wu yeah. recognizing that position, getting out immediately. Roger looking for a guillotine. Oh, let's let's go of it. He's getting pressure. Yeah, Narvaez really putting that shoulder in his jaw right there, really crushing him down. It looks like looks like maybe Roger's got his foot in. Paul has got a quarter guard. I'm thinking. It's a real tough position to be yeah. in right here. Just gonna say in these positions are real crucial because any wrong move and it could cost you the fight. So Absolutely. you really gotta be patient. He's a step away from being in a very either mounted or being in a very dominant side exactly. mount against a guy that's a little bit bigger than him. He did a good job at holding on to that hip though, that's stopping him from getting exactly. over to that and mount. This is oh. what we were talking about. He did a great job maintaining that position. He lost it for half a second. Very aware of it. Yeah. Looks like he's trying to get an electric chair. Trying yeah, to get I think he's got a electric chair grip. Yeah, he's got the grip, but he doesn't quite have the lockdown. Yeah. Narvaez recognizes it, grabs that leg. Uh, Roger's got to, he's got to get that. Yeah, he's got to get like his he's leg sitting down. back down on his arms to try to prevent him from moving anywhere while he thinks about what he's going to do next. Yeah. Oh, he's getting that leg. Now he's trying to pass. Uh, and if you notice, Narvaez is keeping extremely low. You cannot give Paul Wu an inch. He's mm -hmm. really trying to get out in every which way he can. Yeah. 
and that shows that he's taking advantage of his smaller size, trying to be a, the scrambler, the more scramblier, is that even a word? <laughs> yeah, scramblier, yeah, I think it is a word to an extent. I know what you mean, it's less leg, less limb you have to yes. drag through the there smaller, with the position. Yes, the smaller you are, the harder it is to grab a hold of those limbs and stuff like Absolutely. that. So he's making himself into a tiny little ball, and I'm sure it's frustrating oh, Roger. look at that, and look, he is almost got it. He's got the grip. Does he, does he got locked down? He, does he have the lockdown? I, mean, uh, I can't really see from this angle. If he has the lockdown, he has it, but yeah, not. Lo oh, no, it I'm looks like Narvaez, that size right there. He's cut that angle off, recognized the position. Just there. I think he's planning out. Coach is telling him to be heavy here in this position. Yeah, he needs pressure, heavy. I think he's. Tell him to rock him back and oh forth, right left there. and Look right. Look at him putting that pressure, just basically laying on his face right there, using his shoulders yeah, and his back. He's doing a great job of just making it uncomfortable for Paul. Extremely. Work. work oh, 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 he's getting the arm. He's, he's like getting the arm. Working the Kimura. Roger just getting yanked it off. He's getting the Kimura. He's got his Kimura Taking his time. Taking he knows, time. He knows he has the position. Oh, he's got Paul Wu's been oh. in here a number of times. Looks like he's going to get it. Uh, he gets really working for it. Paul Wu trying to grab under his leg to try to protect. Oh, this fight is very, You know, if he were to straighten his arm out, it would work, but it looks like it's already past that point. Oh, a Narvaez and with the, the Kimura. is there. <laughs> Roger finished it. It's a good fight. Aggressive pressure. And your winner, via Kimura, Roger Narvaez. Good job, fellas. match of the absolute bracket, Eddie Bravo Brown Belt and EBI 14 competitor Patrick Donabedian takes on on an invitational veteran and Texas's own Patrick Miller.
the 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 I wonder if he ever has those thoughts in his mind. It's like after Dee goes to Ellie, he's trying to get under her but at the same time he's like more. So Miller just really just staying on top of him like a wet blanket, just not trying to give him any room to breathe. Using that third hand, his head right there too. Very, very good technique. I can hear he's got really good Staying session. low. They're both low. Good match. Checking the time there, Miller. He definitely. That's the thing about these super fights I really enjoy, Michelle, is just like we were mentioning earlier, they can throw it all out there. But at the same time, you got to pace yourself. You got to pace yourself. This is tournament. Yeah, it's yes. an eight minute time limit, these two. 
Miller knows what it takes to win these invocationals. Yeah, so versus a super fight, he has to definitely pace himself. Checking the clock again there. Breaks up the clinch. Back on their feet. I think he knows it's going overtime, so he's just trying to conserve his energy. It's a very, very smart yeah, tactic by the veteran there, Miller. Do a good check check. Got some sweat on the mats there. It's Patrick D representing Ten Planet. Oh, oh, tried to go for Nujimata, it looked like, oh. for a second there. It looks like it backfired, but it looks like he's trying to work for the lockdown. He's got one butterfly in. Looks like he's going to go ahead and abandon that. Looks like he's going to try to go for that patent rubber guard. Looks like Patrick D is getting his guard. Yeah, he's just going to go for it. Not he? close. Trying to create some space there with that frame. And we're going to overtime. Yeah. So Miller versus Donna Bedian going to the overtime. Yeah, like I said before, I have my money on Patrick Miller. All right, well, let's see. How much money did you bring? <laughs> oh. Wait, is there anything you could gamble yet? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Patrick D is going to try to take advantage. Of looking like potentially looks like the fresher fresher guy right here, but Miller, such a strong guy, maintaining that position, got got it in there. He's controlling that shoulder to get him from um, rolling over. Doing a great job. Is of Patrick it. Dean? He's still struggling to get out, but he's turning. A lot of hand fighting right there. Look still at that. Still has he's his back. He's got one hook out. He's gonna try to shake him out. Here we go, here we go. Oh Patrick my goodness, and Donna Bedian still, still holds on to it. Great yeah. use it was of the near. Oh, oh my down. gosh. <gasps> He's out. And very, out. very good yeah, job. Uh, good so 35 seconds he wrote his back there. All right, so 35 seconds is the time to beat. 35 seconds is the time to beat there. It's like riding a bull. It's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I have to say, he was but he on. But lasted longer he than eight seconds. He right? sure did. Yeah, eight it, seconds. In bull riding is eight yeah. seconds. <laughs> I have to say, he might have two careers now. <laughs> Miller takes the bat. Oh, immediately. And he is squeezing as hard as he can, hipping into him, really trying to get that body triangle. 35 seconds is what he has to beat or he has to get the finish. Yeah, Patrick Miller getting that. Miller, the veteran here, has definitely been here plenty of times. Yeah. Whether it be in the cage, whether it be on the mats, he's done it all. Yeah, that's a good hooking, uh, hooking tactic. Don, Don Obedian's really tried his best. He's trying. Working to get his leg over so he can turn in. Really trying to turn into him. Oh, oh yeah. and Miller gets there it. There it is. Patrick Miller takes the and your winner by fastest escape, Patrick Miller! In the last match of round one of the Absolute Division, on at World Open champ, Tommy McKay takes on Legacy Jiu Jitsu's Dennis Grogan. Fighting out of the red corner, representing Gracie Humida Jiu Jitsu, Tommy McKay! Yes. Oh, nice. Coming out with some of the drive music. <laughs> Very nice choice of soundtrack right there by Tommy McKay. But Tommy McKay is no joke. Uh, over under Gracie Humida, uh, believe it or not, just recently got his black belt. Uh, I've seen him compete under brown belt for, I guess, the past few years. He's been here in Texas. He's a local guy. Fantastic. Actually a training partner with Tim Kennedy at times. Oh. So this guy is no stranger to heavy pressure. No, uh, definitely. And his opponent. Fighting out of the blue corner, representing Legacy Jiu-Jitsu, Dennis Grogan. Very good guy here out of uh, Legacy Jiu-Jitsu out of Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, actually the winner of the uh, Jiu-Jitsu Kumite, which is a big in-house tournament we have okay. here, where we have people from all across the U.S. come and compete. He came all the way from Alaska and he took it home. All right. So let's see what he does tonight against Ana Invitational veteran Tommy McKay. Here we go. Shake hands and it's off to the races. There we go. Hand fights. Grogan, actually his first opponent in the Jiu-Jitsu Kumite, I believe, was about 70 pounds bigger than really? him. Really? Yes, actually got the fastest escape out of that. So he's no stranger to going against bigger opponents. Yeah. But in this case, it looks like he actually may have the advantage. Mm -hmm. 
Dennis gave him his butterfly hooks. And transition to Z guard. Got that Z guard going. Nice call there, Sergio. And let's go. Z guard looking for Delahiva. Let's go to Delahiva. Try to get oh. oil and lick lock. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, does he get that? Oh, oh, they oh. run into the oh, crowd. Oh. Are they going to continue? They're, they're continuing, continuing the off the crowd here. They, oh, have, oh, to they have to keep going. They have to keep it going. Oh, get a stack. These, these ladies have front oh, row. Oh, wow. You talk about slicer, front slicer. row. Oh, my God. Oh, what slicer. a battle. Wow. Oh, the resilience nice and the technique by nice Tommy Dennis. McKay to get out of that. What an amazing transition. And those ladies got their, mon their money worth. Oh, yeah. Front row. There you go, people. Yeah. On a gym. Any Anytime we have on an invitational. Oh, Dennis Gro Grogan going for a Look at that. Lock. Grogan actually has the arm. Arm and the leg. And the he leg. Has the arm. Oh, yeah. That's incredible. He's got his legs figured forward. Look yeah. at that. He is just starting to inch that heel closer and closer yeah, to his armpit right trouble. there. Oh. Going to go belly down. Oh, he's trying. Uh, he's getting up. Time McKay Dennis is a great job. Looks like he's going for the leg. Yep, oh. he's going there for the leg. He's going for the leg. And Did he tap. Is. There it Dennis is. Dennis Grogan. Man, those are sneaky. And your winner, be a heel hook, Dennis Grogan. JP Sears here live in New York at the Tribeca Whole Foods launching Onnit products. I'm celebrating with some MCT oil. It's my favorite oil because one, it's a healthy fat, and two, it's one of the most pretentious oils you can get. All Onnit products are 25% off today, and you can shoplift for 100% off as long as you don't get caught. If you ever wanted to be a real man, I recommend Alpha Brain. Otherwise, you're going to be too beta. Whenever I take Alpha Brain, my memory is increased so much that I remember that I took Alpha Brain. Delicious. Would you like to try some Alpha Brain? When you're on mushrooms, do you ever have the problem of hallucinating and seeing too many unicorns? Well, Shroom Tech Sport will cure that. It's all the shrooms and none of the hallucinations. Would you like some more kids, man? We don't know who these are. Half off today. I just want to... to kick off our second round of Super Fights tonight, 10th Planet Austin's Tristan Hill takes on AGF and Fuji double gold medalist Ryan Pooley. Yeah, had some uh, great matches already. Uh, a lot of intensity. We've had some go to overtime. We've had some less than in, in a minute. Uh, been, in less yeah. than a minute, yeah. It's been a good, co yeah. it's been a good combination of a lot of different things, and I, I really enjoy watching this. I'm right in the middle of camp. I'm getting ready to fight. Um, oh yeah. April 14th, and um, even though I'm here, you know, it's kind of like a half vacation work, but yeah. I'm really, I'm learning so much just sitting here watching these guys. Oh, coming out with the American flag. Oh. Coming out with the American flag, it's just a hill. Woo! There you go, that's how you do it. Oh, look at that. Tristan Hill coming out with some Jimi Hendrix carrying that American flag. Ryan. Little beast. Oh, oh what is up? Sergio, looks like he's taking a cue from Kid you. Is an coming animal. Out with that uh, stage presence there. Tristan Hill. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, Ryan Pulley. Uh-oh. Man, these kids, I'm not sure if it's them picking out the music or it's their <laughs> parents, man. They got some good taste. Yes. Hendrix, now Dropkick Murphys, man. We're rocking out here tonight at On an Invitational 7. Perfect song for the day, right? Absolutely. Yeah. St. Patrick's Day. I almost forgot. I was just and, I and I had to say, <laughs> Ryan Pooley, a gray so belt? Ryan Pooley no, is no, actually no, a, a double gold yeah. medalist yeah. in AGF Dallas and at Fuji Dallas. So this kid has a lot of accolades under his belt. But he's yeah. coming out here with a huge yes. smile, ready to go. I just can't believe this. It's Tristan Ryan Hill's Pooley. a great competitor as well. Really good. All right. Oh, oh and off no time we go. Oh. Right to business. Oh. Oh. Oh, my this God. And they're off. Right off. Look at that. Oh. Told you guys. Oh, right there. Yeah. Oh, that was clear.
close. He almost had that arm bar. Yeah, both Bert's of these that guys are just amazing. You know, when they're young too, the flexibility yeah. is a, a little bit. Oh, yeah. And look at that. He's going for going for a, either a straight ankle straight ankle lock. Yeah. And Christian Hill is wasting no time whatsoever. The tides have turned very quickly. Oh, oh my, my God! Just oh from an arm bar to a straight that? ankle lock. Your winner, be a straight ankle lock, Tristan Hill. Making his Onnit Invitational debut tonight, Justin Rinnick looks to challenge himself against Darkland Lab Brown Belt, John Tabal. And he's recently started training under. So he's training. He's been training under Travis Moore uh, recently, who also competed earlier in the same division. So let's see if he can get vengeance for his coach. And his opponent. Fighting out of the blue corner, John Tibalt. <laughs> yeah, he literally is proud of it. It's so funny. I, I I have nothing against that. Cranks are the worst. Yeah, you know I like a good crank myself, but you know with the wrist locks, man, that's also a, that's a thing that is sneaky, man. I can't tell you how many times <laughs> that people get caught, even top level. All right, we're about to kick things off here. Another super fight. Justin pulls guard. Oh, he's got his butterfly hook. All right, let's see if we can see one of these wrist locks here. What do you think about this beard here? Do you think it's beneficial to him in the grapple? You know, as a man who actually uh, sports a beard from time to time, I just kind of switched to the mustache, kind of an homage to Dan Severn uh, recently. But uh, yeah, it really does help in terms does it? of yeah, in terms of protecting your neck. It seems like you can kind of get stuck on the chin if you tuck your chin a little bit better. Uh -huh. But that's just me. Maybe I just have a weird jawline. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't know because I've never been able to grow out a beard like that. Oh yeah, that's a good thing though, Michelle. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Justin just lost his guard. <laughs> Looks like he's trying to recover. Ooh, John trying that. To Man, like John T. Bow right here, Austin. From oh. here in Austin. Oh, John, right oh. back over. Look at this. Oh, oh look at that. Stuck. That is a, no, oh, the triangle. Now he has his arm. He's got a triangle. He's got a triangle there. He switches oh, it to an Oma Plata right there. Man, those legs are fast. And John recognizes it. Man, what a fantastic transition right there. Those legs were so fast moving around. He couldn't keep up. John's got his butterfly hooks in there. Pinch and pass, as coach says. Yeah. What does he mean by that? Pension pass. Yeah. Hmm, I don't really know. Maybe it's a code. <laughs> That's what I use, codes. Do you use codes in your fights? Do your coaches call out different things? No, it's actually my dad. Oh, okay. Oh. Like for Ezekiel, he says E. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, don't give it away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I was saying earlier, sometimes you can they know it's coming. Yeah, that's you true. You can give it away. I was lying. <laughs> <laughs> Sergio's giving mixed signals over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Someone's going to be listening to this broadcast. They're like, E, it's going to be something totally different. <laughs> That's how ahead of the game Sergio is over here. E. So this match right here is going really good. It looks like John's really trying to work the uh, butterfly in there. And he, he does have the butterfly hook, hooks in. Yeah. But and oh, Rennick and looks like he's trying to, to, to get up. Yeah, framing right there. There we go. He's been in this position for quite a while there right there. Almost oh, went no. almost went in the dog fight oh, there for a second. Nice pass. Wow, like that was John smooth like right there by John. His feet seem to be locked, preventing him from getting any further. He still has pretty good position. I think Justin has a quarter guard. Oh, no, he just got Switching to guard. right back to guard. Yeah. He's got an over hook. They're just grabbing that, getting that meat hook oh, over there. Boom, right there, hip bump, fantastic.
got the mount now. He just needs to maintain oh, that position. You know, oh, he's got great control. job oh. keeping that side control. He needs to try to work a Darce. It was available there, but now it looks like the window opportunity has passed. I think it is Rubber Guard City right here. Yeah, yes, sir. John got a knee shield, and it looks like he's going for Rubber Guard. Yep. So, so John's got a really good Rubber Guard right here. Fantastic flexibility. If he gets on his hip a little bit more, he might actually be able to get over the head and possibly get that Gogo Plata. Sergio, you said Rubber Guard is one of your favorite things to go to. Yeah. So in this position, what would you do? I'll get rubber guard, I'll put up fist, and then I'll start doing uh, zombie, and I'll start working for uh, Omoplata. Omoplata. Oh, there it goes. Oh, oh <gasps> so close. Close. Almost had the Omoplata. <laughs> Very good job listening there in terms of his coach. Went for it, the guy was just waiting on it. Johnson guard. Yeah, just he got 2 one, one and then this. John's trying to, trying to bump, bump himself, oh. just couldn't quite get it. They didn't get the bump. Got to get so much leverage when you do those mm -hmm. hip bumps. Yeah, he's got deep Don't butterfly go. in right there. He's got that overhook. Yeah, you got control of the, uh, the left arm on those butterfly hooks. It just doesn't seem like he can get any leverage because um, he was he. On top there, it's going to be Justin Rennick. Yeah, Justin is doing a good job. At yeah, he was framing him pretty good. Now, I don't know what he's doing with his left he's arm. He's really stuck in that position right there. It's a real tough position. Once you got that overhook and you start kind of checking the time, you turn and look at that wrist right there. Look at that, like we were saying oh. earlier. Oh, oh, oh. That Omoplata, I, I can tell. I mean, excuse me, the Gogo -go Plata. He was setting up that Gogo -go Plata the earlier. He's going wild. I think he's going for a Gogo. -go. He's Go -go really Omoplata. working it. He's working it hard right there. He he's, knows he I has I think he's reaching for his foot. And he's being very yeah. calm about it. Oh. And it looks like John knows what he's doing here. Yeah, I think. Really trying oh. to. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, almost, oh. Almost has it. Oh, he's going for Gogo. -Go. Almost has he's going it for Go -Go. right there. Gogo -Go Omoplata. And Rennick, man, Rennick is getting his face cranked really bad oh, right no. now there. Looks like he's trying to transition to the Omoplata now. Yeah. There it is. Justin Stacks Justin right there. Ooh. Rennick Justin. defending still. Justin. Got on top. Man, what a fantastic match right there. Rennick establishing position. It's quite the battle. Good scrambles. Yeah, Justin's got good defense over this match. Think. It's Justin on top. Oh, here we go. Coaches. Oh, now he's got a north-south, but at the same time, was very susceptible to that arm bar still. Didn't quite have the full John is just doing such a good job at staying small. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Oh, Justin going for leg. Oh. Wow, and he gets out. John Pulls guard out. immediately, and now John's on top John here. Out. They were starting in the middle. Man, what a fantastic match between these two. Justin in guard, John on top. The crowd's definitely liking this one. This is one of the more popular matches it seems yeah. like tonight. They've got a lot of got a lot of supporters out here in the crowd. Yeah, another good tactical crowd. fight. Both these guys still cold and calculated. No matter how aggressive it gets, once it all calms down, they reset and they get right back to you business. You have to. You have to be able to stay in the zone when, when it gets chaotic. Because if, if you get chaotic, then you then you lose sight of. Oh, it. Justin oh, going for an arm bar. That arm bar. What a yeah, fantastic setup. Justin going setup. for an arm bar. Nice. That's arm bar. John he needs, to extend the, he needs to extend those legs before he gets swept. If he can kick his legs up and go to the side at an angle. He can go in and sweep yeah, it down and prevent. But jo John has that really good base right there with his leg. Yeah, he's Stopping him from yeah. kicking out. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Really Fantastic. Cool. That was out. deep waters. John got out. And Tebow gets right out. Oh, right back to aggressive. Now Rennick. Now Justin got um, on his a butterfly back. hook. Don't let him get to overtime. Oh, look at oh, that Justin's right there. Holy cow, how look at he? that flexibility. Oh, and oh my God, it's a go-go plata, but look, he pulls oh, up. It. 
Oh no! Oh, no. oh sweeping him! Look at that! Just oh! Sweep. Oh my he goodness! He came up! He came up! Now John got the butterfly hooks. Justin just reversed it. Fantastic right there. Oh, and now John's going from River Guard, I believe. There's five seconds left. I'm trying to get that angle. It's oh, fine. we're end of regulation, and we are going to overtime, ladies and gentlemen. That was a good match. Going to overtime. So we got overtime here. Yo, chair. thank you. This way. Oh, yeah, right here is the chair. So Tebow's got his back right here. Justin Rennick doing everything he can, but oh no, he's got that arm trap. It's gonna make it really hard for him to turn out of that. Yeah. But Justin sure. seems to still get his grip. That right there is almost as good or just as good depending on who you are is a body triangle right there oh, but oh Justin turning, Rennick's Justin still trying turning. to pull out Justin's and out Rennick gets out Woo. 20.41 so 20.41 20 second escape time now just if get, can get out quicker than that he will win this one if not Justin Rennick will take it home Justin get in the back. Justin's got a hold for 20 seconds. Justin holding on as much as he can. Oh, he's going for a choke. Justin going for a he's choke. He's got that rear naked. Oh my goodness. And Justin Rennick, rear naked choke in overtime. What a victory for Justin Rennick. Uh, Justin, looks like the crowd is Winner by rear naked choke in overtime, Justin Rennick. match of the evening, 10th Planet Omaha Brown Belt, Ant Lopez takes on Gracie Humida Purple Belt, Brandon Kinney. Fighting out of the red quarter, Ant Lopez. One of the referees here tonight, uh, Alex Gold, who is a 10th Planet Purple Belt, uh, who actually got his start with Ant up there in Omaha. Okay. Ant's a brown belt, fantastic competitor. Uh, we spoke to him this morning, very nice guy. Uh, look forward to seeing what he has today. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, Brandon Kitty. Ant Lopez, a brown belt versus Brandon, which is a purple belt. Brandon Kinney. Brent, yeah. I mean to say it up. Okay, I will. I'll say it to We have a pre recorded the affiliation. Match is eight minute time limit. I have a feeling it's going to be a good one. Yeah. Uh, both of them are short. I love Professor. Looks like Ant being the aggressive uh, one. His ready, ready war. War. <laughs> All the rest, they have their own thing ready to go and it's like, war right Cause yeah. these, just that's what they're doing right these are modern day gladiators here absolutely oh. and they're going to war Brandon on top oh fantastic look at that rubber guard yeah. it, Lopez was telling us about this this morning that was his game plan was going right to the rubber guard and that he did just he that exactly you know sometimes look, you just can't deny it look at that <laughs> a legit rubber man right there he yeah, just he like out of that, cool. though. yeah Ooh. But just that was just the way he got up there so quickly. He's very impressive. I can see why it's his bread and butter. Ant Lopez going for that rubber guard again. Such a great position yeah. because you can oh, use your feet guard. High guard. You have your hands available to do other submissions if you want. Kind of check out the landscape of what's going on and figure out what you want to do while you have them pinned. It, yeah, that's a very good observation, Michelle. That's one of the things I've always noticed about rubber guard players. They take their time because they can. Yeah. It's such a, before you know it. Oh, oh wow. And there was the tap. And Lopez finished. What, what was that, a blood choke? And your winner, Ant Lopez. Woo. planet.
we, I, co I call him coach myself, but yeah, Professor Curtis Imbroff is not unheard of. <laughs> I was like, is it weird? I'm like, Professor, he don't even look over. <laughs> it's, it's very like an informal vibe. Are we on right now? Go? Yeah. So Roger Narvaez is actually a contemporary of yours, really. I mean, he was in the yeah. UFC around the same time as yourself. Well, for those of you who don't know, Andrew Craig here. And yeah, I've trained pretty extensively with Roger, man. Um, we both fought in the UFC at the same time, 185. He actually beat a guy that I lost who He beat Luke Barnett in Austin. Yeah. Um, he's a giant 85er. Well, like we were just talking about that earlier. Yeah, yeah, No yeah. matter what weight class he is, he's a big guy. Yeah, he's long for yeah, just his, his jiu-jitsu solid, but man, Joe is to be not to be trifled with yeah, yeah. <laughs> he'll hook mach he'll hook machines straight in block anywhere your feet are I you mean, best that hide first them. round he got four seconds on travis moore i mean i don't think you're gonna see a quicker submission than that okay nice kick i was going for those knees narvaez takes a quick shot i think he knows he's not gonna get it. i don't think joe cares if he does get it anyway no points in this so that's why guys are just jumping guard brandon kinney had a great takedown last match but it didn't matter straight into guard. You like pulling guard, Andrew? Not a big fan of pulling guard. You know why, though? Why? why my guard sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that, that would be a good reason not to pull. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. He went for that Iminari. Didn't quite get it, but man. <laughs> well, you know, when that guy like Marcin Held went for the Iminari in the UFC, it just ran into a knee. Oh. Yeah, so yeah I, I remember it's that. It's situational, you know, depending on the sport. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've been talking about all day, like sometimes you know what's coming, and even though you know what's coming, it's going to get you anyway. Sure. But yeah. sometimes you get caught, and that's a good Ooh. example. Got it. Oh, yeah. and, he, and he goes to his back. He's like, come on, let's play. And that's probably like the most efficient thing to do, right? Because you're going to try to wrestle somebody else because you both y'all aren't that good at wrestling, but you try really hard and you get tired and yeah. then by the time you get down, you don't have much of a game left. Yeah, I think I'd be perfectly content just fighting hands for the better half of the, the fight and no then doubt. going I think for the submission that's at the very right. end. Absolutely, that's a good game plan. That Wear and somebody out. Ooh. That was a fast little... There's so many tactics with this style, with these style of rules, you know what I mean, in terms of preservation, especially in a tournament format. Yes. I gotta say, these guys look sharp in these rash guards, but it's always a bummer when they end up in the same color. Oh, yeah, I know. It's hard to tell who's who, right? I know. <laughs> Especially when they're the same body type. Right. Okay. By the way, fantastic rash guards available uh, through Hypnotic, actually. Get to see a little bit of uh, Joe D's top game. Little Hypnotic, bit of the art game. of greatness, actually. If you actually go yeah, to hypnotic.com right now, it's 20% off rash cards with promo code ONIT7. That's O N N I T 7. He's going for that honey hole. Uh -oh. oh, man. Uh oh, something's about to happen. <laughs> right here. Look at this. <laughs> look how long Norvise is. But look at this. Oh, oh my wow. gosh. Out of Yo. nowhere. Like Joe Durkheisen. My stuff. goodness. Is that the second one? That's round two right there. <laughs> And your winner, be a heel hook, Joe Durkheisen. Wow. Man. In our next matchup on our semifinals for the absolute bracket, we're going to have Patrick Miller taking on Dennis Grogan. Little known fact about Patrick Miller, he fought Tim Kennedy in MMA like a decade ago. Wow. Yeah. A decade ago. Uh huh. Like most, it didn't go well. <laughs> Tim is a beast. He's give him in the eye. Look at I that. love how he competes. <laughs> he is fun. He got kind of does the shakes his finger. At I people. know. He like shakes his and he, head. And he he walks around yeah. like the sassy He's walk. He's real sassy. He does the sassy yeah. walk. Yeah, it's, I love it. Little yeah. switch of the hips. Uh huh. And it's uh -huh. it's almost scary. It's intimidating. It's like what is he doing this? To well, because it's not like a little dude doing it. He got his no. giant ball dude covered in tattoos. That's a very confident man who yeah. does that. No, make no mistake about that. Right here is a fantastic matchup. This easily, if the brackets were done differently, this could have easily been a final matchup. Both these guys, veterans, 
a lot of experience between the both of them. It's fantastic. Now I've got a question. Now D- Rogan, I know he's got a lot of tape on his hands. Mm, I was. Just he must be. A, is he a big time gi player? He's got super messed up fingers. Yeah, I spoke Ooh. to him about this in class yeah. the other day. It's from the spider guard. Is what he said. Uh, Years of spider oh guard yeah, basically yeah, made yeah. it to where he has to tape his fingers up. Like a true OG Brazilian. <laughs> yeah, dude, I mm, love it. I, That's awesome. I might just do that just to intimidate people because <laughs> I really don't know what I <laughs> can do with the gi. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. That's a good way to intimidate people for sure. That, that's a pretty good marketing thing. I didn't even know they made like uh, rubber little ring things for your fingers what? like that. It's pretty genius. <laughs> it's like when you scratch up your gloves to make it look like you've been doing it for years. <laughs> <laughs> Intentionally right. give yourself cauliflower ears. Yeah. So <laughs> right. So you look hardcore. <laughs> All I right, Rogan pulls guard, <laughs> oh. takes away any satisfaction Patrick Miller might get out of a takedown. Yeah. Certainly not two points. Yeah. I think Rogan right here, definitely feeling comfortable where he is, very confident. Man, Patrick's tough because he's got that nice wrestling background, yeah. there, so he's got a base on him. It's and hard yeah, to get those he doesn't want to. Yep. He's, and he's he does content a great job doing this right here. Not engaging, you know, like he, I gotta give it to him. He's he's trying to win this thing, you know, mm-hmm. and he's doing what he's gotta do to win, and that's mm-hmm. not engaging in like the in, in their, their best game. game. That's yeah. their game is playing with the feet. Yep. There's playing assassin with the feet, try to pull them into into their world. He's like, nope, I'm not having it. <laughs> He's also got a pretty distinct size advantage. I think Grogan was just barely over 200. Patrick Miller was like 240. Wow. A very compact 240, though. Yeah, That's sure. like a boulder, basically. Well, I mean. And we got Here round we go. two, so we got, you know, eight-minute round, two OTs. He's got time to put his weight on and wear him out a little bit. Although he did have a tough match with uh, Donna Beattie, and that must have taken him out of him a little bit. Yeah, I feel like sometimes when you have tough matches like that and then you have to wait a while until your next match, it's like an adrenaline dump. Yeah. You're like, and you, you get them T-Rex <coughs> arms, that's the worst. <laughs> like where you <laughs> literally can't touch your shoulder, you can't straighten your arm out. That's one of the downsides mm-hmm. of it. It's almost like it. once you sit down, it's like it's almost a negative effect. Yes, you got to keep moving. Yes, always oh, keep moving. Ooh. Almost had that. I like pretty acrobatic jumps. Up. All right, D. So. Oh, he moves like a cat. I mean, it's un- unreal. I mean, he's... Very little knee right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very good like movement for a guy his size. I heard that grunt there. Yeah. <laughs> he was thinking about throwing an elbow, <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't. <laughs> He's using his legs to keep that space because he knows as soon as he does get in, it's going to be hard to get him off. Man, I like this. I mean, this is pure Texas versus Alaska. Patrick Miller, you know, trains with the best of the best in Texas. And this is, you know, the dude that came down from Alaska to challenge everybody. So many guys here from Alaska. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I'm surprised. Yeah. And Grogan actually won the Jiu Jitsu Kumite here last month. So he was just oh, here oh, competing oh, oh, uh, just so a month close. ago. Wow. Oh, so close. Oh, he passed. Nice pass. Nice. Wow. Now Patrick Miller game. gets this the pass. He had him exactly elevated. I thought he might get it, but Patrick based out, was able to pass and get impressive stuff. He's looking over at us. <laughs> That's a I think that's a message the to you. Very <laughs> yeah, about to say he either scowls at us or he gives us the sassy walk. I'm about to say Patrick Miller. There he goes again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this the winking over here at the broadcast booth. Very comfortable. Love this guy. <laughs> Intimidating guy, no almost oh, going, a almost a Darce. He had oh, that Darce for a second, it. but just lost. Him. You know, Man, what a to tough position, and Grogan recognized where he like was. That. Checking the time. Patrick really knows he's pretty good at those escapes. Mm-hmm. Such a thick dude is trying to hard to get a, a good body lock mm-hmm. on him when he get his back. Circling, getting his breath back down. Yeah, and the thing is, it looks like Grogan's a little bit in terms of fatigue. It uh, looks like he's a little bit less fatigued in terms of this match. It seems he's taking a little bit easier. Um, one of the benefits of EVI here, no, not having to worry about dealing with points at the end of regulation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I was impressed that he caught Tommy. Tommy's no joke. He's one of the best guys in Austin. Uh, solid Gracie Humida black belt. Trains with uh, Tim Kennedy. Yeah, yeah trains I with Tim on a, a very regular basis. And, um, yeah, got caught. Slick stuff. It, it can happen, yeah, you know. For that's sure. The beautiful thing about the sport is that you're never safe. I'm humbled often. Yes. 
And that's why I think it's so great for kids because, you know, it teaches you so much about life. You know? Yes. The good, the bad, the ugly. You have to learn it all. I think it's cool for kids, but then there's kids like Sergio and stuff that <laughs> make me feel insecure <laughs> about Absolutely. Yes. So Just I'm like, mixed, I have mixed emotion about the kids yeah. doing jiu-jitsu. What do you mean? Because oh, they're, they're getting so much better than they're us. They're way <laughs> better than we are. It's make unbelievable. you feel insecure, <laughs> not yeah. the other kids. <laughs> it's no. funny. Like, training the with kids the kids. Are fine. <laughs> They're s- they're smaller, but like because they're smaller, it's like you have more attention to detail on things. It's like that's unreal. Passes. Wow, nice pass. Oh Inside. man, this now is tough. I think he's gonna try to Granby oh, out, but no. Up. Wow. He's on him. He just, just let him up. Uh oh. He, he I guess Patrick it. Miller like knows it. something we don't. No, Patrick's just a dirty dog. He's just a grinder. He's gonna wear on him. Look at that. He doesn't care. It's like let me get you tired, then we go to overtime, and I just hold you. Exactly. Passes again. Passes with ease right Keeps there. Keeps his lock. Getting framed. Two minutes Checking left. the clock right there. Nice body lock. Don't Look at that. Frame. He's got his back. This is not good for Grogan. Really keeping low, putting mm-hmm. his chest and his shoulder. Keeping his feet away so he doesn't reach for him, but He's having good sweet pressure. Sweet, sweet time. Uh-oh, and, and the grip is broken. And if you are tries to roll for a leg, maybe hits a grand It looks like he's looking for something. Yeah, and I don't think he, he knows he's not going to stand. But if he can get back oh. to guard right here. Yeah, he's either yeah. he's trying to roll and he's looking for it, but Patrick's got that leg and pretty the nicely. It and just like leg. and just like you're saying, Andrew, it's really taxing for him to get up from this position and this late in the round. It oh, may not even it. be worth it, you know. Exactly. Oh, and he the back is turned. Roll. He's like, you're going to roll. I'm going to let you go, and we can just start over. You notice uh, co-promoter Curtis Himbroff saying regulation money, guys. He's telling Patrick because he knows Patrick's trying to, you know, ride this out and win. Oh, and really? Oh, yeah. oh not getting paid Grogan as much if these finishes. trying his yeah, best. Yeah, that's true. I didn't yeah. even think of that. Oh, it looked so. like it fired him up there. Oh, oh with the wow. And the Kimura. Wow, Patrick Miller with the Kimura, okay, ladies sir. and gentlemen, okay. out of nowhere so near the. Fired him up and, and yes, he did. Near the end of regular challenge. Your winner via Kimura <laughs> and going to the absolute finals, Patrick Miller. <laughs>
This is actually her first cut down to 105 okay. in any form of combat sports, wow. actually, and she's out here tonight doing so. Charlene Gellner, no joke, coming from Combat Sports Academy in Dublin, California, with, uh, with Kieran Fitzgibbons, uh, Dream Killer Bolanos, Kevin Ross. Uh -oh. She trains with the best. Well, it looks like uh, it's going to be a good matchup then. War. Here it is. Uh oh. Immediately, Grace goes to her butt, and she's fishing for something. She's got, got that Ooh, leg. Gellner trying to get low immediately. You can tell but she's that gonna Grace has an objective, and she's... Grace is a rubber guard machine. Yeah. yeah. Trapping those legs, trying to get that side control there. Doing a great job there, Gellner, like a true veteran. tell here how styles make fights, right? Because Grace is jiu-jitsu girl. She likes to fight off her back. And then Charlene, obviously with the MMA background, wanting to be on top. A heavy pressure yeah, game. Up. Trying to control those legs, trying to get around. Wow. She has her head trapped. Oh, got that 100% oh. right there. Something's oh, going to get the sweep with the 100%. Like, awesome. She can actually finish it if she gets to the right position. Oh, oh, but lost it there. That just shows you how strong she is. Oh, she got the triangle though. Amazing job right here. Oh, oh she's she got the triangle. She's getting the angle. Gellner's really got it in deep. I mean, Gellner's in there deep. She's really gonna have to stack and try to walk through oh, Gundrum. And taps. Wow. wow. And Gundrum oh, takes Gellner out via like triangle. Right to business, great. Your winner, via triangle, and going to the Adam Wade Finals, Grace Gandrum. Taking the call in only four days' notice, proving ground MMA's Kate Gondalas will challenge herself against Gracie Baja Brown Belt, Amber Rymars Freitas. Kate is getting ready to match with my teammate, Amber. Um, and Amber's always been there for me, helping me with my fight, so I'm really excited to see this Absolutely. matchup. Absolutely. actually competed last week in the Pan Am, so did really well. She won. Oh, good for her. Congratulations yeah, to her. Yeah. Excited to see this. Now Kate's a gamer. She came in on a week's notice. We had somebody drop. Less she than a week. Said, I'll be there. I'm good to go. Look She's here. Us. She's ready to rock. Ready to rock and roll. Rolling them shoulders back. And her opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, Amber Rymars Freitas. Here we go. Uh oh. And this is your teammate right here, Michelle. Yes. Um, Amber always helped me with all my fights. I started training with Amber and Professor Barata when I was getting ready to fight Jessica Panay because she was a brown belt at the time. I had no gi experience. I was a white, I wasn't, I was a zero belt. Right. I was nothing. And, um, you know, through the help of them, they helped me be victorious in that fight. It became Adam, I became the Invicta Adam Weight Champion and I won via armbar. So. So she's had a brown belt for a couple of years then. Yeah, Amber actually just. Just got her brown belt. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha. nice. Here Damn. we go. So nervous. Might even see a Barata plot tonight. Oh, Who knows? Oh, maybe. Amber getting low. These girls have tremendous Ooh. grip strength. Now Amber got the top position. Got the overhook right there. Got that clinch. <laughs> Amber probably going to try to explode out of this. Not sure. Kate kind of rolled to her back. Might have thought she was going to catch something in transition or hit a sweep. Or maybe there she's got go. a little too tense and mm -hmm. rolled to her back. I mean, it is kind of a. It takes some people off guard. Uh, yeah. And they get here like, whoa, what'd you do in front yeah. of these people in this intent of an atmosphere? It uh, really gets your nerves going. Yeah, you know, when you compete um, at these huge tournaments, there's matches going on all over the yeah, place. Yeah, people could care less about what's going on with your match, yes. you know. But here, it's like all eyes on you. You know? Uh, nerve-wracking extremely let's see she has Nerve. her head trapped um but doesn't look like she has her arms pinched together maybe just looking to break her posture right now doubtful she'll catch anything on uh on amber when she's 
just learn. Mm-hmm. And Professor Barat is telling Amber to watch her Kimura. She sees that he has, she has a hold of that arm. Now, if she was able to speak Portuguese, they could talk. Uh, without her knowing. Stella is another language. Yeah. <laughs> Stella is another language. Always helps. And right now, Amber's just not real like uh, keen on using a lot of energy to get out of this, which is not in danger. Yeah. Kate's just kind of holding her. I think Kate's kind of, you know, wasting her energy a bit trying yeah, to hold her down. Exactly. I mean, she's breaking her posture, but she's not doing anything with yeah. her. Yeah, Amber is strong over hook and mm-hmm. trying to get her high guard. But um, before long, those legs are going to run out of juice, and I think uh, Amber's kind of probably going to pass at that point. Mm-hmm. Amber's so good at being patient. You know, she's probably one of the smallest people in the gym, and she always has to work with people that are bigger than her, and so, you know, it, it's been a part of her game. Mm-hmm. She learned how to be patient because these big, strong guys, they they hold on to her, and she doesn't... And her technique must be crisp as it gets. Her technique too. is crisp. She has really good grip strength, really good um, technique, and of course, she, you know, Professor Barata is there to talk her through all these movements. Wow. Really work that high guard there. So Kate's on the bottom trying to work for that high guard. She's doing a Amber's doing a great job stacking though, keeping keeping a good base. Game of inches at this point, it's all of the small movements that can Lead to make or break the fight. Oh, and and the, pass the pass is there. Fantastic job. Wow. Staying wow. nice and low. That was very good. Cool. Oh, right Amber to the mouth. To mouth. Oh. And looks like Kate might give her back. Uh, She's turning. W- wait, wasting no time whatsoever. This is the first time Ember's done a competition like this, Andrew. Oh, really? wow. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, she did Pan, which, I mean, in the IBJJF world, that's, you know, one of the top uh, competitions. And did, she, did she medal? Yeah, she got, she won. She, she took gold. Wow, okay, so. Huge uh, achievement. Recent gold medalist, brown belt, Pans. That's huge. And she's, and, and Kate's mm, turning. It looks like she's like, ah, I don't know if I want to give her my back or not. Yeah, it's one of those. It's yeah, one of those you things. Do? What do you yeah. do? What do you do? The lesser situation? of two evils. It's like, do I go yeah. to my stomach? Do I she's try to dark cave it out of it? Yeah. It looks like Amber has her left arm wrapped around the neck. Also, she should be. Also, she might be trying to go to Ren, taking her arm, so she could try to corkscrew out and hop mm-hmm. over. It could be a whole other thing. Mm-hmm. It's all. It's oh. all a game of inches mm. from here. Well, you Professor Barat is telling her to take her time. Yeah, but you know, all sibs are real, so I mean, you can get that crank. Is that crank? Yeah. <laughs> he said <laughs> crank it. <laughs> oh, and she's going for it. How important is it to listen to your coaches in situations oh like this? Oh, man. If you have that proper communication between coach and student, you do exactly as they wow. say, more often than not, they're right. Yep, because they can see what you can't. Exactly. You know, they're on the outside. And they're giving you that, uh, just that good advice that, you know, they're not here. They're mm-hmm. staying cool. They're giving yep. you that cool advice. And Professor Barata's always putting Amber in the gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't cut any slack for her. Puts her to the ringer, huh? I'm sure if anything is worse. Oh, for sure. Crank it, <laughs> he's saying. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, now she has a mouth. I can't see from here what Me she has. Me either. Let's see here. Really just keeping low, just maintaining that position, really just making her uncomfortable. It's probably, too, one of the first times that Amber's fighting somebody that's actually lighter than her. <laughs> Amber's wow. tiny, but Kate, what did she weigh in at? She weighed in at 98 pounds. 98 that's amazing. Pounds. And yeah. I was like, girl, you could have weighed in with all your clothes on. She's like, oh, my coach just told me I couldn't yeah. do that. <laughs> <laughs> Got so like, okay. the guns. They made, yeah, they made her, they, they made her yeah, uh, Grace cut her guns. Grace is you know, probably smaller than that as well. I is she really? She oh, yeah. So one more time about that, Andrew. Oh, I said Grace. I think is a uh, uh, probably smaller than Kate. I would imagine. I think so too. Really? I mean, I did the weigh-in, so I should know this, but oh but I don't gosh. have it in front of me. I used to think I was small. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that what that's what age does to you, right? Yeah. <laughs> or at least that's what I'm blaming it on. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, looks like she has an arm. She might be going for something. She's she's trying to get that control on that left arm, coming up for that high mount. Doing a good job of keeping her base real low so she doesn't get bucked off. Man, 
is exhausting for Kate. Yeah. And, and am- oh, oh almost, that's that stuff is never fun. Oh, here bathroom. comes that triangle. I think Kate's just a little now. Oh, right without here. a problem. There oh, it is. There it is. And if she doesn't get it here, she's probably going to go for that omoplata. Make it look easy, John. She got the <laughs> triangle twisted the wrong the d- There the it is. Way, but she's trying to hop over. She's probably pretty used to. She's expecting it. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. She's hiding the arm so she can't get hold of the arm, but it doesn't matter because she's telling him to squeeze those knees together. If she can get the right angle. I think I'm about to see this tap now. And I think she might. These girls are so. I mean, look at this. Like, it's so much heart. Yeah. Oh. Oh! 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 Winner by 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 Amber. Amber. Yes! Good job, ladies. Your winner via armbar, and now going to the Adam Wade Finals, Amber Rymars Freitas. Kicking off our third round of Super Fights tonight is Legacy Jiu Jitsu Purple Belt Kayle Talamoni, looking to challenge himself against Dark Clan Lab Brown Belt Vince Barbosa. Mass, and he's a, he's a pit bull looking dude right here. He's Absolutely. stout, strong. Yeah, the guys Giant like that, it's, it's a double-edged sword. It's like they got such a thick neck you can't get around it, or they have such a short neck you can't get under it. Yeah. And it's a tough, tough thing, and they're coming at you. Yeah, they don't have a neck at all. <laughs> <laughs> you, you run into girls like that ever? No, no neck girls? I've never. There's a couple out there. Did, I'm not going to name names. You wouldn't want to <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been crushing them. Yeah, yeah, this box is almost empty for good reason. I'm gonna go with the warrior bar. Better than an almond joy, more nutritious than you could ever imagine. Protein bites, my honor. All right, man, we got Darkland versus Legacy. This is gonna be a solid match right here. Here we go, boys. Oh, oh. Ooh. Oh, smack. It's the oh. war smack right there. Yeah. All right, here we go. Look at the thighs of so that guy. So you have to choose between refing and commentating. Um, I really like being right there, mm-hmm. getting the action, but commentating's mm-hmm. fun. Mm-hmm. I like chatting with people. Mm-hmm. Vince looking for like maybe a front headlock. He might bounce up, put some shoulder pressure on. Mm-hmm. Lay's gonna try and push through. Ooh, watch out for the choke. Barbosa, it looks like he can actually get a dart swear if he tries. Yeah, that's Lupe's favorite thing. Oh, 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 oh it slipped that, right out. Thought he was that, that neck we're talking about, that he, yep. he doesn't have the neck, so he just slipped right his out of that. His head's just a little stub and going yeah. out of his shoulders. <laughs> exactly. The bald guy's trick, or shaved head trick, more so. Good. Lupe, do you ever leave a little bit, like a stubble on your head just to be mean with it? You know I actually do, I and do. I'm actually Sick admitting bastard. this on <laughs> live uh, stream here. <laughs> I'm sorry to all my teammates. <laughs> it's like when you when you go to spar with the Velcro. Oh, that's the worst. Oh, no Velcro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get out of here. That's the thing. You can go to shower and the, the, the Velcro is what hurts the worst. Warrior <laughs> bar. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword, though. When you shave your head, like, the same day or the next day, anybody can just touch your head. It's like glue. Mm-hmm. So we got right here. Tell him you're working at top game. How often do you roll with someone as big as Lay? Never. Never. <laughs> Are you pretty particular about the Actually, size of people you roll with? Um, oh. One of my coaches, Coach Joey, who's going to be in my corner this fight. Villasenor? Coach oh, Joey Villasenor. He's the OG. Yeah. But, um, you know, I roll with him every now and then. It's just so hard to get anything wrapped around him. He's just so big. Yeah. Like, I can't. It's not practical. And Definitely one of the challenges for smaller females in jiu-jitsu schools mm-hmm. is their training partner. It's like walking into a gym, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. and none of the dumbbells are like, they're all heavy dumbbells. <laughs> yeah. They're like, okay. Yeah, I'm actually quite fortunate. We have a good group yeah. of girls. Yeah. Is uh, Heather Jo Clark still out there? No. I don't know where she's at, to be honest with yeah. you. She kind of bounces around to different gyms. Right on. Lay playing Always. that possum guard. Yeah. Just kinda He's like, come on in. It's like when the alligator keeps its mouth open and just <laughs> snaps down on you. Tempting. <laughs> Very. There's weight on food. Go. Did a good job at staying on the side. Got that underhook yeah. right there. In. Yep. Vince framing Fishing for out. that underhook. <laughs> oh, oh the goes for that Kimura. Go get it, he says. Couldn't Coach. quite get it there. Oh, gets that mount. He actually he got the head arm. Now he has the arm triangle. He Let's just see needs if he can to step it. over. 
put his head to the mat, touch the back of it's his head, he can get this. Uh oh. Oh, I, move here. I, I hear Push some noises. Oh man, he's not enjoying oh, that. Oh, that's oh. Attack. And Vince Barbosa takes it by a head arm choke, ladies and gentlemen. He was fighting it for a while, just couldn't fight it anymore. Oh. <laughs> and your winner, be a head arm choke. Fitz, bottom all side. Look at that stone cold killer. Fresh off winning double gold at the 2018 IBJJF Pan Ams, where she finished all of her opponents. Elizabeth Blades looking to challenge the On It Invitational 155 champion, Ketra Bartek. Fighting out of the red corner, Liz Clay! Yes. He's one of the best athletes in the game, and we don't push him, we just let him have fun. All the kids who have fun. He is so awesome. She graduated high school early. Um, to pursue jujitsu full time. Really? Yeah, so she's graduated full time jujitsu. She was teaching kids when she was 14, maybe 13, something like that, in a small town in Alaska. That's where I'm from as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, rural Alaska. So I'd go back to HQ down in LA and I'd tell people there's this kid in Alaska that's going to kill everybody. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Liz Clay is the truth. All right. So, Liz so what's in the water in Alaska that's bringing all the We're monsters out? We're close to Fukushima. Out. We're real close to Fukushima. <laughs> I know. Uh oh, that's the Stone Cold Killer right there. Right there, the youngest ADCC trial invite. Ever. Some pretty crazy highlights. It's unfortunately, a, a leg break it. And a reported fighting out of the blue quarter. She Tetra Bartek pulled guard on a girl, that broke her leg viciously. Um, really? But How she wouldn't want me to How talk about break? that. Oh. Okay. She jumped guard, and the girl's foot got caught underneath her, and it broke it sideways. Oh. Ah. I didn't know it's about bad. that. I'll yeah. have to take a look at that. So Ketra Bartek, a brown belt under Paulo Brandel. Super solid competitor, um, on invitational champion. So she's uh, here locally, huh? She's local and she's a beast. Um, but if I had to predict this match, I would say Liz Clay via straight ankle lock. Oh, yep. Okay. You see the difference in the energy. Whoa. Elizabeth's all business and Ketra's trying to come out here a little bit more playful. Yes. Oh, oh, pulling guard. Pulling guard immediately. Yeah. Yo, or Omoplata. Strong legs. I would say. You know, Ketra trying to create space. It's oh, Ketra God. Bartek is what we, call a, what we call a palindrome. You can spell her name forward and backwards. Oh. You notice that? I did not. Ketra Bartek. No way. The cuddly killer. Their parent, oh my gosh. Sneaky. That is way cool. There's that omoplata, yeah. Ooh. She's coming out. There you go. We'll She's going that. for the omoplata. Oh, we're gonna See go what ahead happens and from here. here. We're going to go ahead and reset here. The crowd's enjoying this little, the act of movement oh, between these two still, girls. She's still got it going right here. She's going to hold a face and she's going to hip in oh. for the tap. Oh, like that, that little crank yeah. there. Just being mean, you know, getting in there. It's competition at the end of the day. I don't see Liz losing this, what but maybe. Very oh, brutal. She has oh, something. Wow. What is that? The Coach, what the is that? Omoplata control. Omoplata control. That's a like double a, whammy a right there. right there. So, you know, I recently seen Mackenzie Byrne do something similar to this in an MMA fight. Oh, man. Oh, fantastic. Good job, ladies. Incredibly powerful. Elizabeth Clay. And your winner, via Oma Plata, Liz Clay.
And in our main event of the evening, 24 fight MMA veteran and Ultimate Fighter Season 7 contestant, Jeremy May takes on IBJJF Gold World Medalist and EBI 14 competitor, Andrew Kimmler. Really into it. All the music. That's what gets them hype, right? Puts them in the zone. But Priscilla can't stop bouncing her head either. She's over there. Something's gonna happen. Man, he's... Well, look at that smile on his face. Totally oh, enjoying it. Wait. Look at that. Looking to have some fun out yeah, here tonight. Jeremy May, all Robert right. Giving us a nod over here at the broadcaster's here. booth. And his opponent, That's a big dude, man. fighting out of the blue corner, Andrew Kimmler. But wait till you see Andrew Kimmler. A monster. It, Kimmler is a large, large man. Um, <laughs> unbelievable. He cut today. He no. Cut. He cut to 265. Really? Wow. He was about uh, five over, he said. Yeah. So. And that's and that's one of the things about him. I mean, he is a um, even amongst other heavyweights, it's a giant. And it's not like it's not a bad large. It's a no. good large. He's very proportionate. He's just I like every bit of him. Just a tall hey. man, broad guy. Heavy pressure, man. Always a pleasure to watch Andrew Kimmler. Here we go. All right, be safe out there, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> you can see he's a bit nervous. <laughs> Front row, get ready. Alex Gold. Referee go. tonight, ladies oh, and oh, gentlemen. Oh! Jeremy May for the double A. Good. Get us Amazing. to the ground where it's safe for the crowd. <laughs> Especially with these two big boys. God, yeah, they take three steps, they're off the mat. Trying to wrap his arms around his neck. Let's see what Jeremy throws out. Kindler, man, he moves like a light guy, though. He's yeah. not afraid to invert. No. He's not afraid to go upside down. He's super flexible. Yeah, and that can catch people off guard. When they're that big, mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. He has... He trains with Joe Deertis or something as well. So okay. a real strong team. And we've seen Texas Joe. Punishment yeah, group. he just buzzed saw through the, his bracket. So. There, he, there he goes. He's trying he to go for that leg. He had he an opportunity for a guard serve for half a second as well. Decided not to go with it. Fights off the Kimura. Still going for that Kimura again. Pulls out. Who's in Jeremy's corner? Do you recognize that guy? That is Bobby Southworth from season one of The Ultimate Fighter. That's Man, an I knew o you would know that. That's an OG <laughs> over there right there. That was a crazy, crazy season. Season one, huh? Oh, yeah. He had Koscheck, Diego Sanchez. Oh, Diego. Chris Lieben, uh, Nate Quarry, all those guys. The legends. Love, yeah, all legends. The ones that put him the, put him Diego. You know, the path. The trail, Diego is the last one standing, actually, in the UFC. Out of all those guys. I love Diego. Great guy. So, Jerm <coughs> he's um Diego. I train with Diego, and he, like, when we're warming up, he literally does ninja rolls and says them out loud, like ninja roll. Nice. <laughs> ninja roll. I'm very familiar with. Yes. 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 <laughs> he only looks like he's trying to like take a top play on him now. He's like yeah. pushing through, playing that big guy. Trying to like just move into a top position. I feel like bit. Jeremy yeah. might want to uh, snap down and sprawl on him a little bit. Yeah. Absolutely. Take a front headlock play here. Yeah. He's using his head as a third hand, basically. He's a big guy. I mean, there it is. Down there we go. He's seen it coming. And then hard to sprawl out when he has his feet yeah. under him, trying to he'll, uh, like suck him back in. Yeah, exactly. And then maybe snap a pass. Mm -hmm. And these guys are looking for Kimura's. How important is a hand fight when you're in these positions? You get oh, that's that the hand. first fight. That's yeah. the most important fight. Uh -huh. so. So it's like as soon as you bypass that, then you can do what you really want to do. Start controlling the feet. Mm -hmm. Move up the legs, pin the hips down. But nowadays it's just fuck it, try a leg lock with everybody. <laughs> 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 if all else fails, yep. leg lock. Exactly. And May, both these guys got some leg locks for sure. Absolutely. Uh, Jer yeah, Jeremy m definitely loves them hill hooks. Very good with them. Oh, oh got the arm stuck. Oh. He got out of there. Out, oh, here we go. Wow. Kimmler almost gave it Look how oh, flexible nice Kimmler is. There was that man. mobility, man. Fantastic. Wow. Yes, that was insane. There they go. Kimmler feels more comfortable sitting there after uh, taking that first single leg. Actually, the double leg, excuse me. Double leg takedown to start this match off. Circle, circle, circle. It's like they're playing <laughs> Duck, Duck, Goose right now. <laughs> <laughs> Who's 
going to get dizzy there's first. Wind. There's the north-south play. Just waiting for uh, Jeremy to dive in. Yep. Do some type of cartwheel move. Jeremy May Ooh. actually also trains with uh, Chet Congo, Ooh. Bellator heavyweight. So uh, definitely gets a lot of quality time with other big guys out okay. there. Very patient are both of these guys. I know they both want to win. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go to overtime. Yeah. They're looking for that submission. Ooh, oh, wow, like a knee flying slice. knee slice. That was <laughs> that was really nice. Look at Medi the frame set up. Yeah, yeah that frame is something. There it oh. is. No risk, oh, no reward, pulled. right? Oh, oh Kimler got who him. Who did it? Who tapped? Yeah, Kimler, Kimler got him with the heel hook. Oh. They went 50 50 on it. Good job. Play with fire. See, sometimes. Better be a heel hook. Andrew Kimmler! Sponsors is actually doing some bonuses tonight, and we were going to get those all hashed out here in a second. Okay. Good deal. But yeah, there's definitely some money on the line tonight for all these competitors. Grace Especially is just so unassuming, right? She walks out like she doesn't want any yeah, part of it, and then exactly. she just. And her opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, Amber Raimars Freitas. And Amber is married to Coach Professor Barata. Who, the, um, yeah, yeah. The, who, the, the inventor of the Barata, the Barata Plata. Plata, BJJ hero, legend. Also trains uh, a number of other people out there in Albuquerque. I know when uh, Carlos Condit came and visited us, that's what he showed us was the Barata yes. Plata. So it came full circle. When, it's uh, a fun move. It, it really is. It's something that you can get from all sorts of places. Shoulder lock meets Oma Plata, hard to beat. Yeah, yeah, it's just creative, which is what all these new kids are coming up with, right? Yes, some really incredible stuff. And so, and we have joining us here another guest commentator, 10th yo, Planet yo, ATX yo. Purple Belt, Alex Skoll, who's also been a referee Let's go. tonight. So Amber pulls guard, and then she ends up in the Z guard, trying to control the space. Once again, Amber is more well versed in the gi, but you know is just uh, trying to like s open her wings off and try try her luck at no gi. Look at Grace. Grace is never in a hurry. She's always just so Patience. methodical and there's no so calm. No need to even be in a worry when there's I mean in a hurry when there's no points. So mm -hmm. I mean that's one of the other great things about it too. So they could really take time to be methodical, go for what they want to and play the game they prefer to play. And now it's the final round, they can really give it all they have. Amber's on her back and Grace is up top. Now, Trying Grace, to control Grace her is basing with that arm there. It's a possibility that might play against her. She's not careful. Uh -huh. Professor Barat is telling her not to let it get close to the head. Then she'll have a bit more leverage. Now it's a bit of a neutral position, and Grace is trying to suck her body in, which is where Amber does not want her. Absolutely. So Amber is trying her hardest to keep her away. Can't see it, but both these ladies' grip strength have to be off the charts. Absolutely. And when you're this small, you Look have no choice but to train with people that are bigger than you. If you can see right there, she's got a really good meat hook under there, right behind the shoulder, under the armpit right there, mm -hmm. behind the neck. And they're both really fighting for that head pressure. Whoever has the head pressure, it's the head and the hand. So if you see the, the hand fights, and whoever has the head pressure underneath the chin is going gonna, is gonna to win the match. And so they're fighting for these small inches. Mm -hmm. Keep leaning up. Heavy pressure Looks like she's really digging here. for that darts. Definitely an alien. 
trying to make it easy on Grace at all. Move. Amber doing a good job of controlling the hips. You let them hips go. The girls are their their dexterity is so crazy and just flipped their hips up from nowhere, especially Very Grace, you know, yeah. with her rubber guard getting all sub submissions from from that place. And Grace's coach is telling her to make her pass. Get that pass and right there. Do some. She's going for that lockdown. a bit more of a scramble. Now she's doing that mini oh, stop. We got electric chair. That's electric trying chair. Trying to get that right arm up to the shoulder is what Grace is going for. She needs the uppercut. But it looks like uh, that leg. Amber's sprawling out pretty well. Recognized it pretty quickly and abandoned it. Good job by Freitas. I love Barata's coaching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or like, so cool, like, I've been a fan of Barata for a while now, yeah. and like meeting someone like real life like that, and he's like such a cool he dude. Is. Extremely like, nice guy. Uh, uh, you would, he's just, you know, he's the best. He's, he's a great teacher too. He spent like three hours just going like all out teaching the kids just randomly. Yesterday. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And such an amazing teacher. Yeah, when we, I met him yesterday, you know, I'm very familiar with him being a big MMA fan and everything, and I uh, met up with everybody for lunch, and I come in, I see the Ray Borg jacket. I'm like, oh my God, there's Barata. <laughs> it looks like Grace is trying to sweep her now. I mean, this is an interesting position. They both have weird positions, <laughs> but well, they don't want to let go because they oh, know look that at this. Just, uh, the minute they, somebody lets what go, is this? something's going to turn into a scramble. So this is actually a variation that Eddie teaches. So going to the electric chair, it's when you kind of get stuck there. Oh, wow. Oh, there, there, she had a head and arm there for a second. And Cl then she let it go. I Climbs wonder why she let it guard. go. Yeah. It's a very hard choke oh. to finish off your back. It seems. Off your back, yeah. yeah. Look at that Amber's doing there. a good job at trying to create space with her left shoulder. But psh, Grace is just like an anaconda boa constrictor, like stuck to Amber's body. Now, sh now she's taking oh. Amber's back. Oh, man. Smooth. Both ladies needing to stay patient. And Amber's doing a really good job just keeping calm. Yes. Knowing her surroundings. She knows that she's oh. all right. Oh, oh, oh. This, is, this oh, doesn't no. look good uh -oh. right here. This Very close. Look good. If she gets this the right be, angle, this could be, be right it. Here. But this she steps right over. Right look Kay. at that. So Amber staying calm in a high pressure, pressure situation. This is... Grace is bread and butter right here. And and she's holding really tight. Uh oh, she has an arm as well. So uh, Amber's trying to base. fight that arm with her legs. Staying in tight. Wow. And she almost had that arm, but Amber did not tap. Amazing match right here. Look at how what resilient. Some heart. That was hard. Amber Reimers Freitas, extremely she got that durable. Knee in. Wow. Rolling through that, not letting. Oh. Dang, look at that. Good job. Is that arm bar? Grace. Your winner by triangle choke and your on it invitational seven Adam Way champion, Grace Gondrum. Langdon here and I'm on South Congress Avenue in the heart of downtown Austin to see what the city thinks of our new protein bites. I'm picking random strangers to taste test blindly and tell me what they think. Tastes like Almond Joy. Almond Joy. Tastes like tr uh, chocolate truffles. What? Coconut. Coconut. Like coconut. That's what coconut. I'm getting. Right. Coconut. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. Would you believe me if I said there are protein bites? Oh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Would you believe me if I said that there is 
seaweed in there? No, I would not believe that. It doesn't contain so much sugar. Elvis, what do you think about our new protein bites? Perfect balance. Texture is wonderful. Oh my God, it looks like our present. Amazing. Really good. Would you say it's something that you would probably eat again? Yeah, definitely. No, it's definitely like probably the best protein bar that I've ever tasted. For the last match of the evening, our On It Invitational 7 Absolute Championship. Fighting out of the red corner, Joe Durkheising. So Durkheising's done a great job today with, uh, with the straight ankle locks and the, just a foot game in the general. The foot game is deadly. It's like so... This dude came out of nowhere. Yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know who he was before this. Yeah. Like with, with, the, with the foot, man, you feel, you're not, you don't feel threatened and then you have to tap. Until the last minute. Right. It does, it's not like a slow creeping submission where you're like, oh wait, 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 no, wait, wait, wait. it's zero to a hundred. Real quick. Real quick. There you go. <laughs> sure. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, Patrick Miller. Patrick, so Patrick Miller, just always at it, man. Yeah. Like, it seems like every weekend he's just doing something different. Always. He's always down to just show up and compete. I, he'll I mean, show up out of nowhere, and it's and, you know one of the. I mean, it's crazy, like. I remember we did Paleo Effects one year, and we were out doing some exhibitions, and I was like, what the hell is Patrick Miller doing here? Dude. <laughs> Dude. But that's what makes and you better, is co exactly. constantly competing and, yeah. and but, like, alleviating the pressure yeah. of competition. It's like, God, it's just another yeah. weekend. Exactly. Even though him, I hate his weekend. style, but I, I, you can't, hate his style. I, I can't help but have respect. Why do you hate his style? It's, you, you guys fought against each yeah, other, and yeah, which Ana Invitational I, I was that? I against him, two Ana Invitational. It's because, Ana Invitational because, five. Are you a jiu-jitsu style? I'm more, yeah, just yeah, kind of like chill, roll with it. Yeah. 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 You talk about a guy who knows his donkey guard over there. Right, here we <laughs> Get go. off me, he says. Here we go. This is gonna be a great going match. A, way, a great way to cap off the evening. Yeah, Miller definitely the more aggressive one, but both of them eager to, to take this win home tonight. Oh, 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 close it up. Miller definitely putting on a show tonight. And like I was saying, very confident guy, veteran. He's been here plenty of times, whether it be a cage on the mats, short notice or in advance, he's ready. And look at those legs. Like, he got some chunks on him. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. And, and like, his, but his upper body is even bigger. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It is nuts. Good boy. Big slab of meat coming at you. Built like a fullback. I wonder if he's gonna like. I, I keep thinking that he's gonna like do a flying arm bar every time he grabs the back yeah. of that guy's neck. Whoa! Wow! Wow! That just made him mad. Imanari roll. He got. He's going for the the feet again. Lupe, does he, does he's he going it? for the does feet. Oh my God! Oh my God! Imanari roll. Yeah. To a hill hook, and we have an on an invitational seven absolute champion, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. M-G. Yeah, wow. Does it again. Joe Durkheising making his name your winner. And new on an Invitational 7 Absolute Champion, Joe Durkheising. World Open Jiu-Jitsu Tournament is happening at Paleo Effects April 27th through 29th. Sign up for Gi and No Gi divisions, all of which are sub-only with EBI overtimes. 
Registration includes entry into Paleo Effects, the world's premier holistic wellness event. Get your tickets on 10PATX.com.